Hi everybody, thanks for joining me again. I thought it would be interesting today to talk about ancient Mesopotamia. Last time we focused on the word culture a little bit, and this is really where civilization took off. Mesopotamia means the land between two rivers. It was between the Euphrates and the Tigris River. Uh, it's what we see now as modern day Iraq. Um, it was called, or is called now, the cradle of civilization because it's really where we blossomed as human beings. And I won't go into too much depth because there's a world of information out there regarding this um, timeline of uh, development. So here is where Mesopotamia would be between the Tigris and the Euphrates River and what we know as modern day Iraq. So we can credit Mesopotamians for things in particular like the wheel, um, language, written language and literacy, the ability to uh, keep track of time, so calendars and um, measurements for um, clocks and how we use them today um, can be traced back to ancient Mesopotamia. They also had a system for justice. Uh, it was called Hammurabi's Code, enacted by King Hammurabi. And uh, it was pretty brutal though. It was literally like an eye for an eye. Their main art forms, since we are talking about art here, um, were weapons, jewelry, and then ceramics that could be funerary or kind of religious and ceremonial objects or items that were used in the home. What's interesting to me is that it seems to never get old, whether it was back during the beginnings of civilization and today, that people don't seem to ever get tired of showing their wealth. Um, back then, they had a way of indicating their status of how much they owned and how important they were by the headdresses they wore, the clothing, of course, and then what they owned and the amount of jewelry and how adorned it was. Today I'm going to be setting up an activity for you to follow along. It's going to be using coffee as a painting medium. Since the Mesopotamians used a lot of clay for their art forms, I figured we would use this time to create our own vase out of the materials that I'm having you use today. So here I have my mug of coffee that I've already brewed and the leftover coffee grounds mixed with hot water and a little brush. This is going to act like watercolor. If you feel confident that you can create a circle without tracing it, then you are more than welcome to do that. So here's our circle. I'm just going to trace around it once more on my own. And then I'm going to do an upside down triangle. That is going to be the mouth of our vase. Okay. So medium size container, upside down triangle, Pretty easy. Then we're going to erase the bottom of that triangle. We don't really need that. 
and you can start to see the shape of the vase forming here. So the next step I'm going to make small arcs on each side. And again, sort of erase those areas that are not needed. So this isn't. I'm going to erase the top part of the circle here. And you can see the shape of that vase looking much nicer. And you can leave it like that or you can add some more dimension. I want to make it look like it's actually open at the top. And this is a little bit trickier, but if you want to follow along and add some dimension. It looks like it's open at the top here. Okay, so here I have my vase. And what I've done is just traced around the outside where those pencil marks are. And I've created the contour of the vase. And I might even want to add some darkness in there. Okay, so the second step was to create the designs on my vase. I chose a lot of coil patterns because that is what the Mesopotamians used a lot of. If you would like to use your own uh, designs for a more modern day vase, you can. Or look up examples of figures that they might have used. You can do that as well. Again, I used pencil and I traced the pencil markings with the coffee. So next we might wanna think about where the light is shining on the vase. You know that when there is light shining on a certain side of it, it's gonna be lighter. And when the light, the places that the light is sh shining on less are going to be darker. So I'm going to say that Maybe the light is coming from this direction. So I'm gonna make this side a little bit darker. If you want the paint to be lighter, you can grab an extra container of water and dilute the solution a little bit. Um, and then if you want it to be darker, you can either let it dry and go over it or just keep trying to put layers here. The tricky thing with coffee is that it's not always dispersed evenly, so you might get areas that are a little bit more dense than other areas. So I took my hand and sort of rubbed off the excess grounds on the paper. I would probably suggest you use a paper towel, but I, you know, I'm an artist. I use my hands for everything. Um, and then next you can just Sort of go back in and recreate those lines. So I'd recommend that you not try to use so much shadow on yours. 
but you're more than welcome to try this if you've practiced a few times. I can send you examples of working with geometric objects and shading them with pencil first and trying to uh, learn how to do that, creating a source of light. So here you can see the light is probably coming from like this direction and then I've created shadow here which I need to rework a little bit more. Okay, so I'm going to stop here before I get my paper too wet and it starts to disintegrate. Uh, there's going to be a bit of a learning curve here even if you're used to using watercolor because this is obviously not watercolor, it is coffee grounds and water. It's not the best pigment you're going to work with, but it to me is interesting. It looks almost very much like it came from the earth. Once you're happy with how your coffee painting turned out, you can go ahead and cut out that face, cut around the shape, and put that aside. This is the second piece piece of paper is going to be your background and the tin foil is going to be the first thing that you glue onto your background. So I wasn't too particular about um, my tin foil. I sort of like the uneven edges but you can cut it straight if you'd like. That's going to be the first thing that you paste down and then the second is going to be the vase that you cut out that's going to go on top as if it's a tablecloth and you're welcome to etch things in here like the Mesopotamians used to and this wasn't on the instruction list for materials but I gathered some greenery from my yard and I just liked that it added some color and texture and I haven't yet glued it on but you're welcome to do that with whatever you can find Thank you for following along with this activity today. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I certainly learned a lot along the way that I didn't even get a chance to share with you. Uh, but if you would like a modification to this lesson, you can use the paintbrush and the coffee solution to practice letters or write your name and it will be almost like calligraphy. So I hope that's helpful and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.